There we go. Um, Neil sent me a message uh, saying that he just didn't have time to review Primer and said he'll catch up uh, later in the week, which is totally fine. That's okay. That's no problem at all. If you got no time, you got no time. Um, speaking of having no time, I have had no time to watch Welcome to the Jungle, so I'm gonna uh, review. Down by Law. Down by Law is a film that I've seen more than enough times to do a review of without uh, having to watch the film again. Uh, Jim Jarmusch uh, writes and directs Down by Law and Jim Jarmusch is by far my favourite film director of all time. I love every film he's ever made um, and I've seen every film he's ever made. And Down by Law is probably um, my favourite film that he's done. Um, it's just, it's fantastic, it's a fantastic film. I think it looks wonderful. Uh, it's definitely got that d very distinct Jim Drummer style. You know, there's a lot of negative space in all the frames. I'm moving all about the place, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot of negative space, like, Jim Drummer kind of takes full advantage of, like, the rule of thirds at all times, and there'll always be just so much blank areas in a shot in this film and it always gives this films a really distinct look and it's fantastic here um, the rating is wonderful Jim Jarmusch films rely pretty much entirely on dialogue and I think as far as dialogue goes he's probably at his best here um, it's just got some of the funniest scenes of any movie that I can think of like the uh, scenes uh, like where Roberto Benigni's character um, confesses that he killed a man and he does that like massive speech on how he was cheating at cards and then they start throwing pool balls at him and he goes you throw ball at me I I throw ball at you <laughs> and explains how he accidentally killed a man but he's no killer he's a good heck um, and just um, like when he mentions Walt Whitman and stuff just randomly out of the blue um, it's 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 hilarious it's it's this funniest movie and of course there's so many funny scenes in it as well like um, when they finally break out of prison which isn't really a massive spoiler when the characters break out of prison um, they end up sleeping in an abandoned shack that's identical to their prison cell <laughs> I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's hilarious. There's the scene where Tom Waits and um, John Lurie uh, can't hunt to save themselves. They're starving. And Roberto Benigni just walks out of nowhere like carrying rabbits. It's, oh, oh, I'm going to have to go watch it again now. I can't believe that I didn't watch it in, participate in the anticipation of this review. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic, and there's little bits in it as well. Like the entire, the first act doesn't really have much in the way of jokes, but it's just it's absolutely wonderful. The opening scene essentially plays out as a music video for Tom Waits' uh, "Jockey Full of Bourbon." Just um, videos shot out of the side of a car, which is um, a style that I uh, ripped it off. I'm not going to lie; I stole that idea for um, a video that I had to make for college last year. Um, and then of course there's the scene with um, Tom Waits' girlfriend throwing all this stuff out of the window and it's, it plays out like a totally different movie really than the rest, than what precedes it. But I think it's absolutely wonderful. I can't think of a single fault in this. The point... Um, God, I can't even think. What to say? Um, the point of the movie isn't really that they escape out of prison, which is quite bizarre for a prison break movie. A prison break movie tends to focus mainly on like their method of escaping from prison. Like if you think of films like The Great Escape, it's nothing but that, and um, Animal Factory isn't really a prison break movie but it goes into depth on how they're going to escape um, by jumping into the trash compactor and stuff like that. Um, in this movie 
they just break out of prison. It never explains. They're ru they're running through a sewer, and it never explains how they get to the sewer. They just break out of prison. The entire film is based on the relations between these three characters: John Lurie, Robert Benigni, and Tom Waits. And it's Tom Waits's first acting role. I'm pretty sure it's his first acting role, and he's absolutely fantastic. He's um, one of the best musicians in the world. And whenever he and like musicians tend to go into acting a lot and it's very rarely successful um, Madonna is a prime example of this having never starred in a film with any decent amount of talent on display um, but Tom Waits is an absolutely fantastic actor one of the world's best musicians and he's a fantastic actor when it comes to this and he is especially good in this this is his first role like I said and he just knocks it out of the park he's absolutely fantastic um, John Lurie has been in quite a few films before and he was in the film Jim Jarmusch made before this one uh, Stranger Than Paradise um, and he's fantastic in it as well Roberto Benigni is fantastic in anything <laughs> in everything that he's ever been in um, so it's just it's a great cast it, the cast pretty much hinges entirely on those three there's not really very many extra characters but it's just Oh, I can't even explain why it's so good. You just have to go and see it. It's funny, it's wonderfully shot, it's got fantastic acting, it's a great story. Just watch it. Just watch it. Um, Jesse, um, Neil, I am really looking forward to what you guys thought about this film. It is one of my favourite films of all time. Um, I'll probably make another video about this later. Um, once I can think of additional points to say and I'll kind of talk to you guys about it later. Um, on Monday I'm going to do my Welcome to the Jungle review, hopefully. And Neil, if you can post your primer review whenever you get a chance, um, goodbye. See you later. Yes, bye. Stupid.